Hello, thanks for tuning in to Zoa Addict's tutorial video for how to ship Zoas. So we'll be showing you how I ship Zoas, but also giving you lots of pointers should you be looking to ship Zoas yourself. So first of all, you take your Zoa. I'm obviously just using a frag plug for this video, but take your Zoa and a shipping pot. Now these shipping pots are available on Zoa Addict, but if you've got your own, that's fine. Um, what you get with the shipping pot, it's obviously waterproof, um, you get a foam insert, these are machine cut and they have a cross cut out of the middle um, which makes them universal for all sorts of different frag plug sizes. So here is a T-shaped one, the cone shaped ones also fit but as long as the top of the plug fits in there, it'll fit in here. So what we do, underwater is the best way of filling these up. So what I would do is to take the Zoa, very carefully press it into the foam insert, making sure you don't squash the zoa as you're doing it. You hold the pot and this underwater and it just slips into there nicely, making sure it's just pushed in there another centimetre so the top of the frag plug doesn't stick out and then fall out when you put the lid back on. Again, I put the lid on underwater. I do this so you don't get any air bubbles caught in there. Um, and then what I'll also do is put in a few carbon pellets in there. The carbon pellets will help soak up any toxins that might get released by an unhappy zoa during shipping. It's just a, a fail safe and again if, um, if it's delayed it, you know, it's more likely to start secreting toxins so the carbon is just an added fail safe and uh, help it nice and fresh and healthy. So once you've packed your pot, you're going to need a poly box. It has to be a poly box, and um, what we first to do is take a full piece of newspaper and press that down nice and firm into a box, and then you can put a zoa on top of there. Um, you can fit plenty more than one in there, I'm just using one for the demo, um, but I'd say you can get away with up to eight in a box this size. You don't want it absolutely rammed full because then there's no air left in the box. Um, and it doesn't allow the heat pack to breathe and circulate, so don't overfill it, but you can certainly get away with more than one. Um, after you've got your Zoa in there, you put another piece of newspaper on top, this is really important. Get the hard. This on top. So that gives us a nice cushion between the Zoa pot and our heat pack. We don't want the heat pack to be directly on the pot, otherwise you will have one boiled Zoa. Um, so the heat pack, I'm not going to open it for the video, but um, I use Uniheat 40 hour heat packs. I find that they're um, the most stable when shipping. It'll also back me up should Royal Mail or whoever I use be um, a day late. So it should still arrive alive because they're going to be nice and warm. So once you open this, you give it a good shake to aerate it. This bit's really important. It has to be wrapped in paper. Uh, it says that on the actual heat pack itself. Some people don't do that and it's, it's madness. It needs to be wrapped in there. The reason why you wrap it in this paper is it regulates the amount of air that you can get to the heat pack. If you don't wrap it, it gets too much air, it'll overheat, burn out too fast and potentially cook your zoas in transit as well. So it's bad. You definitely need it wrapped in paper. And then that can just slot nicely on the top of our box. Now, if you're ordering from me, what you also get is you get some freezer added glue, which I put in the box, and you also get a coral dip. It's uh, it's just Dettol, and it's really not needed. We don't have any known pe pests in our tanks, but it's good practice to dip, so I include it anyway. So with that closed, I'll then put a sticker on each side just to secure that closed. And something else that's very important now is to pierce the box. I put a pencil hole on one side and then two pencil holes in the other. And I find that gives it just the right amount of air circulating around the box to keep the heat pack um, you know, supplied with oxygen to give it enough. Um, and yeah, not too much. So, that is now good to go. We send out a little uh, leaflet, and on that leaflet it'll just give you a 
bit of information about our DOA policy, how to acclimatise, a bit about the tank parameters that have just come from, and um, yeah, just a bit of general info in there. Next, really important that you add a club without it. The poly boxes aren't suitable for shipping on their own. Uh, courier companies have a tendency of throwing them everywhere. Um, so yeah, this gives it protection and a bit of tape around there. That's it, our box is good to go. Now, I'll brand my boxes as well, um, so you'll get some sort of comical branding on there, no doubt. Um, and then obviously your dress level goes on top, but that is a tried and tested and perfect way to ship sellers. We very, very rarely have any problems with that. So good luck if you're shipping anything yourself. Um, if anyone has any questions, then feel free to get in, in touch. Um, there are other ways to ship, but this really does work for us. We've shipped thousands of packages in the past, and yeah, we have very little, um, very little issue. Um, 